Okay, once I press secondary, I'll get my guardrail drug list that was input by pharmacy. We will find the medication. We'll say, for instance, this medication is Rocephin that we will be giving over 30 minutes. Another name for Rocephin is the ceftriaxone. So we'll go over to our alphabet here and we will find C. We will page down until we find ceftriaxone. Press there. And then it has preset um, dosage and mLs. So let's go ahead and say we're going to give two grams of ceftriaxone in a 50 mL bag. Next screen will then confirm are we giving two grams in 50 mLs? We will say yes. Again, confirming our drug amount is two grams, our dilutant vo um, volume is 50 mLs, and our dose is the two grams. We will hit next. Then we want to calculate our rate. So we will do our dosage calculation, confirm it on our IV bag, go into rate volume. We will go ahead and press the rate here. And we are going to give 50 mLs and the doctor wants us to give it in over 30 minutes. So to do that, we do our calculation. It'll be running at 100 mLs an hour. So we have our rate, our volume to be infused, and our time to be infused right there. So then I have options for pause, setup, or start. I have now confirmed my order, confirmed my bag. I can go ahead and press start. And you'll notice here that my IV pump has now changed. Our previous rate for our continuous fluids was 125 milliliters an hour. We are now giving two grams of our secondary infusion. It'll tell you the name of the medication you want to make sure that you unclamp your roller clamp and visualize your secondary medication dripping into the chamber. The Laris, Laris pump will recognize when the prescribed volume of the secondary infusion has been completed and it will automatically transfer back to your continuous rate at 125 milliliters an hour. So as a nurse, you want to make sure you are assessing the patient as the medication is being infused Want to assess to make sure that your secondary um, IV solution is being infused properly and then returning to the room to reassess the patient after that prescribed rate and volume has been infused to make sure we have transferred back to our primary infusion rate of 125. Some things to remember before leaving the room we want to make sure we label correctly with the date or day that the tubing needs to be changed. Remember our secondary infusion tubing, if it stays connected to our primary line, is good for 96 hours. If you are using your secondary tubing intermittently and you will be disconnecting from the primary line, maybe you have another antibiotic that needs to be um, given later on in the day. If we disconnect from our primary line, our secondary tubing is now only good for 24 hours. So making sure we're labeling appropriately with the date or day that the, or the tubing needs to be changed. If you are going to disconnect to the secondary tubing from the primary line, you wanna make sure you have a IV tubing cap with you. So we'll go ahead and pretend our secondary infusion has completed. We will make sure we close our roller clamp. We want this to continue running at our primary rate. We will remove, so you twist to the left remove it from the primary tubing and then we will connect our cap to the end so that we maintain a septic it's the white part that goes on twist it on that way that remains clean we can use this intermittently again if we are disconnecting from our continuous line our tubing is only good for 24 hours